everyone! Charity Preston here, again from the Organized Classroom blog. Today we're going to talk about taming the crazy paper monster from all your students' papers all over their desks and all in their binders, all a disaster area. I'm going to show you a quick and easy trick that I have used in the past and it seems to work fairly well. It keeps it a little bit more under control. What you're going to need are two things. The first thing you're going to need are labels. Now, I have Avery brand. Walmart makes them, office supply stores make them, and a generic brand, whatever you need. I get the 2x4 labels, and then I also get the 1x2 and 5 8 labels. They come 300 labels in a pack, or 30 labels per sheet is what those ones are. I use the big ones and the small ones. The other thing that you're going to need are two pocket folders in a variety of colors. You're going to need as many colors as you need for your classroom. So you need to base that on how many subjects you have. So maybe you're doing reading, math, science, social studies, and writing. So you might need five different colors. If you teach all seventh grade math, but you have different sections, you might need eight different colors depending on how many sections that you have. I buy these at the beginning of the school year when they're a penny or five cents a piece at the office supply stores and I buy enough for an entire class set, however many I'm going to need that year, plus probably five or six extra ones as well. Mine are just two packet folders with the brads. They don't have to have the brads. It's up to you, your own personal preference. Once you have your class sets of folders and your labels, what you're going to do is for each student, you're going to make labels for the, the, the small labels, about a half a page for each student. So the top half would be one student, the second bottom half would be the other student. Just make about 12 to 16 of them so that way it's all the same name on there. And I do realize that students can move out, students cannot show up, so I wouldn't do tons of this before you actually see the bodies in the desks. And if they move out, it's a small price to pay for being organized, right? Okay, so once you have a half sheet, I would actually cut it myself, so that way each student has the half a sheet. You're going to peel one of the labels off with the student's name, and on your folder, up in the top right hand corner, you are going to put that student name. Okay. Then with the other labels, the large labels, you're actually going to um, put your heading. So I have math, writing, reading, homework, independent study, seat work, whatever you want to use your folders for is what the, the bottom one will have. So this folder is going to be writing. So I'm going to pull this off and I am going to stick it right in the middle. So now you're going to do this for your entire class set of writing. So all the writing folders will be blue in this instance. So your students will know, hey, when you say get out the, the blue writing folders, they will all have the same folder they will get out. It won't be different. They'll all be the same. And they'll know exactly where to put the papers. At the end of the class, you'll always have them at your fingertips so they can store all of their folders right inside their desk. They'll have their name on it. It won't get mixed up with anyone else's. And if they get ruined or lost, you have your hands on another set. The last thing I do is when I'm finished with my labels, you're always going to have extras. And I would actually make extra sets for when you have students that move in. Put them right inside of a folder, aptly named labels. Stick them in your files. You have them for the next time when you need them. Okay, well hopefully this was helpful and I hope you have a wonderful day. Make sure you visit us at www.theorganizedclassroomblog.com or at our Facebook page. Um, the Organized Classroom blog is up. Have a wonderful day. Bye!